to, to say, and these are the outcomes that I've got. I'm much more interested in the, in the former rather than the latter. This may mean I am the shortest lived head teacher in the history of head teachers as I find that I'm out on my ear as outcomes plummet, but I'm sure that won't be the case. For me, if we get the, the personal development and that stuff that isn't so easy to quantify right, and we marry that with great teaching, then the outcomes will follow. It just seems like a, a statement of fact, really. He said, hopefully. Um, so that's my school, Sir James Smith's school in lovely North Cornwall. I don't know if I'm talking to any other Cornish. Hello. So we know, you know Camelford and you know Cornwall and you know the issues that Cornwall has. Um, so Sir James Smith School is a, uh, a small secondary school, a really small secondary school. We're going to have 530 children next year and only a few years ago we were down to 411. We are, we are pretty titchy, um, but we are perfectly formed and uh, the area that we serve, whilst it's absolutely beautiful, um, does disguise uh, incredible levels of deprivation and all the other issues that I'm sure you're aware of working here in the southwest. Jane assured me that I didn't need to be a SCOMIS expert to, uh, to come and talk to you about our use of SIMS um, and uh, I, I'm taking you at your words too and so far that has turned out to be the case um, that really what people were going to be interested to hear is how Sir James Smith School is using SIMS and it may be as I found from speaking to the last session that actually a lot of what you're going to hear is stuff that actually we're already doing but there may be something new in this and uh, if this is anything like the last session I did I'm likely to take away as much as you are so thank you very much in advance thank you very much um, so our relationship with SCOMIS started around about five or six years ago. We had um, a, a data and SIMS expert that worked at our school and he was the oracle and if he said it couldn't happen then it couldn't happen and being, uh, well, kind of character he was, his default setting was no, it couldn't happen and so that was really frustrating. Fortunately for us, he decided to move on and so we were then left without an expert and we were really wary about simply employing another expert. Instead, we looked for organisations, companies that were out there that might be able to help us and uh, Craig, who is just over there from SCOMIS, he came along and was fantastic in that he listened to our, you know, waffling on about what it is we thought we wanted him to do for us and he was able to make sense of that and produce something which five years down the line is now thoroughly embedded and all of our staff are able to use SIMS in a way which maximises they're, they're as effective as they possibly could be. And so, yes, that is the story of our relationship with SCOMIS. The first thing that Jane thought I should show you is our homepage. So this is the first thing that you see when you open up SIMS and um, there's quite a lot going on there. So I will start off with, um, well, very simply, this one here, the timetable from Nova T, obviously. We use the cover aspect of uh, SIMS. And so if I'd have had a cover lesson that day, it'd be sort of flagging up as red. Um, these bar charts here, these are all of our conduct logs. So around about five, six years ago, we had a real issue with low level disruption at our school. And we had pockets of brilliant practice from teachers and we had other teachers that were really struggling in the classroom. Nothing massive, but just that constant low level stuff. So we, in a staff meeting, we decided that we were gonna come up with a really simple system, which everyone could understand. And being Cornish, we call it YARG. So we've got yellow, amber, red, and green. And if you are doing something naughty, you get a warning, you get a yellow, and you get a point against your name. If you do that same naughty thing again, you get an amber, and there'll be a sanction associated with that, so you'll get a break time detention or something. You continue to make that mistake a third time, you get a red, and that'll be a whole school after school detention. Um, and then, of course, the flip side is the green. So uh, we aim for a ratio of around about three to one. So if uh, in any one lesson you've given out a yellow, then the teacher really needs to be looking for three or four opportunities where they can give out greens to make sure that we're being as positive as we can be. And that creates a conduct score, which these bar charts are showing. And all of our staff are able to have their specifics. So if you're a tutor, you have your tutor group's bar graph there. If you're the head of English or the head of maths, you have all of your classes. And one of the values of that is I've been able to have conversations with my head of English and head of maths saying, well, English outcomes tend to be a bit better than maths outcomes. There might be a million and one reasons for that. But when I look at the YARG scores that you've given out in the last month, 
Well, I see pretty clearly that in maths, you tend to be given out more yellows and ambers, whereas we're being a bit more positive here in English. Now, surely there's got to be something in that. Is there, is there a, a correlation between the positive approach that the English department appear to be taking to classroom management and the outcomes that those children are receiving? And the head of maths, great guy, but there's no arguing with the fact that his department aren't being as positive as they might be, and so we would look to see an improvement in that. That's been really useful. Another tool that I found really useful is this one here. So, I mean, all of these are behaviour boxes and you can configure these to show what you want. That one shows me the use of yellow, amber and red within a 15 minute window. So every 15 minutes that thing refreshes. And when I'm at that stage in a lesson where I need to go and stretch my legs, I, uh, I can go and freak some child out because they've just been given that yellow by the French teacher and all of a sudden Mr Carrington is there asking them what's gone on. When, that, when we were first using that four or five years ago, almost within a half term, that low level disruption stuff just went, just seemed to evaporate because all of the teachers were able to use it in a really simple way, which I'll show you in a second. The pupils understood it and the pupils saw the impact of it because there was somebody from SLT or the head of year rocking up at the door as it happened, as opposed to you know, hearing two days later in the staff room, the French teacher really upset because yet again, little John's done whatever. Other things you can see on there, we've got the attendance and we're really keen on certain subgroups and the performance of certain subgroups and you can create uh, user-defined groups and sims. So we're really keen on knowing how our high prior retaining pupil premium students are doing because we know that they're not doing brilliantly. And so as a user-defined group, I can see what their YARG scores are looking like and I can also see what their attendance is looking like and that information is refreshed all the time. It's being put in anyway, it's just being presented to me in a way that I can uh, make use of it. And other things that Jane showed me just recently actually, the help feature there, takes you through to the website with all of those PDFs and things that you see when the updates are being done. All of our tutors and teachers have that configured and set up to make use of it for them. So before Craig and Scomis came in, really, Sims was just the place where we held all of the names and addresses of our parents, and it was the place where we took the register, and we developed that so that that YARG thing appeared on all of the registers. So here you can see Lesson Monitor, and we've got these columns here highlighted. Now the beauty of that was it showed the teacher, the second the class walked in, even before the class walked in, you could see that, you know, little Johnny there, he's having a bit of a mixed bag of a day. So some teachers really tried to build him up, but actually someone else has had to give him a yellow point there or an amber or something. And so the teacher knew from the moment the class walked in what kind of a day that child was having. You know, teachers know that anyway. Your antenna are picking that sort of stuff up anyway, but actually having that there also encouraged teachers to make use of the YARG as well. They could see that other teachers were doing it. Somebody else was giving out yellows and greens, or I'd better use it too, because with any of these things, the difficulty is getting that consistent use, isn't it, across your staff? Well, this helped achieve that. More recently, we've moved over to this SCOMIS desktop tool, which our teachers are able to get hold of on their iPads, and so the PE teachers are able to take their registers out on the field and all that sort of stuff. Because of the way in which Craig and SCOMIS helped us get the data that we were already putting into SIMS fed in a way that was useful to us, we're able to populate a view like the student teacher view, which is a really, this is the one that teachers go to as soon as they're about to phone home or something. And you get an oversight, don't you, about the pupils straight away. So you can see there you've got attendance information, other key indicators that we have defined. So we do midges testing with them as a screening tool when they join us in year seven. Well, I can have the midges standardized score there for me. So straight away I can see, well, is this pupil performing as we would expect? We've got prior attainment data and then the, the very latest bit of assessment data that went in as well. But this one here is the one that's of most value, the one that the teachers go to most of all. We have a half-termly attitudinal survey. So we call it HERBS. Uh, it's homework, effort, readiness to work and behaviour. And every half term, the teacher simply puts in a number one to four. Are they brilliant or are they terrible? Those numbers are then used to create these categories. So we have pupils that are either honours pupils because everything was one and two, or you're a cause for concern because your overall attitude in that half term was quite low. And so you can see here that instantly that gets flagged up. I know that that child is a cause for concern pupil because their herbs wasn't great. I've also got information about the conduct score, so the number of behaviour points as opposed to the number of green points, all sorts of useful information that I can get hold of there. The one that we are most interested in at the moment though is this one. This one here 
if Amanda Spielman is going to be true to her word and she's going to be interested in how we achieve the outcomes we've achieved, you know, for us, for many of our children, getting them across the line of five years of education is a massive achievement. The outcomes are almost secondary to the fact, you know, you made it through your five years of school. I want to be in a position where I can tell the story about each of those five years. What did, what did we do? What did the school do for that pupil in that year to help them overcome whatever challenges they had? And it's this graph that does that. We've got the green and the red line showing those green positive points and every example of yellow, amber, red, those kind of negative scores. And this yellow showing the overall conduct. So this is our cause for concern student you can see here. And you can see that his conduct score bobbled along, but then very quickly he got back into some old patterns of behavior that was going downhill. Now within the behavior element of Sims, there's something called initiatives. And if you describe an initiative, that could be anything you choose it to be. You can define those initiatives. It could be all the interventions you have in, you know, working with a youth worker, tutor phone call home, being put on rapport, meeting with parent, whatever it is you want it to be. When you log the initiative, it creates that line there. So this is an initiative we put in place. And for a while there, it looked as though for this lad, that actually made an impact. You know, his conduct score leveled off there. Now, being able to tell the story, not only of the conduct, but also the attendance, you can see the other lines there, this blue line here, is showing the story of attendance, and that purple line is showing the cumulative attendance over time. You can see that, again, this initiative here, we noticed there was a problem with his attendance, there was a problem with his conduct, there was a meeting, well, within Sims, you'd hover the mouse over it and you would see what the initiative was, and lo and behold, we've seen an improvement. Now, that is what I want to be able to say for all of the students we've got at our school, this is what your year looked like. We've got a couple of years of this information now, and I've used this at readmission meetings and things like that to say, crikey, do you know what, Nick? Last year, same sort of time, things went downhill. What is going on in your world in November that means things are going down? And that is a cause for thought, which they wouldn't have necessarily had otherwise if I wasn't able to show them in a way that they can really clearly understand. So for me, Something that we're going to continue to develop and work with is this initiatives idea because I think this is how I'm going to tell the story of how we achieve the outcomes we achieved with our pupils. A tool that is already within Sims that you already have but is really unfriendly to get set up, to say the very least, is Sims Discover. Now Sims Discover, when you've just got it in that sort of basic package that you open up, it's useful for identifying people, premium students, but actually that isn't particularly impressive. What we wanted to do with it is we wanted to be able to analyse and manipulate data which other packages we were using couldn't. So for example, we use 4Matrix to analyse our Key Stage 4 data and that's lovely, that does all the jobs that you would expect it to do. But our Herbs report, that half-termly report about homework, effort, readiness, and those categories of, you know, honours student or good student or requires improvement that our children are being told every half term, well done, you're a good student now this half term, let's maintain that. Four Matrix doesn't offer you a tool to, to analyse that or to do anything with it. Well, Sims Discover does, and it does it brilliantly. You're able to, so for example here, all I've done is I've lifted the course of certain students in the autumn term, the second half of autumn, put them there. You just drag and drop over my cause for concern students this time round, and I can see, well, how many of them were cause for concern in both occasions? Because I'm really interested to know, well, why is it you haven't moved on? Whatever the tutor, the head of year is doing with you hasn't had the impact we would want. You can then create that into one of those user-defined groups that you have showing up on your home page. And it's a way of us making sure that that data that our teachers are putting in any way, we are using it in every possible way. So for us, uh, having Craig and Scomis come in and help us get Sims Discover set up, and this was four or five years ago, it now ticks over, it now just does it. It's been brilliant on lots of levels, not least of which the fact that all of our staff now are really comfortable with using this, so we will have tutors that look at their tutor group and look at the performance of, and they will be at our conversations about the fact that, well, you know what, you were requires improvement last time and you're still there. The sort of stuff that beforehand required some administrator, some data manager to produce and then provide to the tutor in a small school like ours where we just, you know, really limited capacity, really constrained as we were hearing this morning, this sort of thing has been brilliant for that. It's been a four or five year process to get to a place where all of our staff are using it, but one of the ways in which we've helped with that is we've made sure that we're expecting its use. So here is an example of a page from the head teacher's report. So the head of year is producing a report here for the governors and they're describing the initiatives that they've put in place in that half term and the impact those initiatives have had. And they're able to show 
And then they're, they're generating that stuff for themselves. That isn't data that we're giving them centrally. Um, and that feels like a pretty good place to be when HMI are in next and they're grilling our middle leaders. Well, they're going to be speaking to a well-equipped, pretty knowledgeable bunch of middle leaders about how they've identified the students and what initiatives and impact those things have had. Uh, Jane thought I should mention this one. This has been a standing agenda item with our governors for a long time now because it's just so, so easy to create. Um, the school report one, if you haven't seen this, it honestly, it did feel like it was going to change my life. The time I would spend trying to get this information beforehand and then just literally at the cost of a couple of clicks, you've got the information about your school on that day. Just perfect, just exactly what I needed and it has all sorts of various key indicators. So there you've got the whole school population and there you've got all the various subgroups you're interested in. It has information about fixed term exclusion and the YARG system, all that sort of stuff. Really simple, really, really useful. And so in terms of where we're going next, um, we are playing at the minute with that intervention model on Sims and I'm all ears for anybody that's ahead of us on that. So within Sims, you can put costings next to the interventions that you're doing. One of the things we know we're going to be asked about, rightly or wrongly, is how much bang are we getting for our buck with our pupil premium students? What are we, what are we managing to achieve given what we're spending? And so the initiatives feature in Sims looks like it will give us a tool to help with that. Is there anybody that's using that already? No. Ish. There's an awful lot of moving parts to it. So at the minute I've got my business manager who is putting the costings together. I've got my admin assistant who's making sure that all the information from English and Maths about the various interventions that are going on are being logged. I'm going back to my head of English and Maths to say, I really need to know what you did with them in that intervention, not just the fact that they are getting it, what was it? Um, but certainly that's the job that we've got on end of this academic year. I'm hoping I'll be there. And the other thing that I'm really playing with at the minute is um, we've got an issue, any answers to this one? After school clubs and things, parent phones up, you know, John hasn't come home, where is he? And you think, ah, oh, I'm sure he's playing rugby, but there's no register, there's no nothing. And that feels like a fundamental safeguard and issue to me there. Parents phoned up, child hasn't come home, we need to be able to say whether they're at school or not. We've had a play with Innova T to try and produce other sort of sessions, things, things like that. We're really struggling with it. Is there anybody that's got any little nuggets? Yeah, try it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I need to find out a bit more about that activities module. I wonder if that might be the way. Um, so anyway, um, yes, as I said, I might be the shortest lived head teacher in the world because I'm taking Amanda at her word. It's about how rather than what. And I think we've, you know, we're able to tell the story of how with our use of Sims. Apologies if that was all stuff that you have seen already and have heard before and I'm all ears for anything which we might be able to add to that and more than happy to answer any questions about any of that that you've got too, if indeed you've got any. Don't feel you have to. Well, I hope so, unless it was just a shopping list for the way home. I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, and part of that was recording some of our, uh, a brief note about some safeguarding concerns around them. Yeah. We've since brought seat bombs. Yeah. Uh, and, and that information now goes in there. And, and obviously, what we're not going to be doing is making people record things in two different places. Yeah. So we're trying to get back on my time about what goes where. I don't know if we can talk to them. So um, we've recently become a multi-academy trust, part of multi-academy trust, and the appeal of CPOMs for us is that information that the primary schools are creating, generating, we would then have access to. So if it's a younger sibling or if it's a child that's about to make their way to us, well that's of real interest to us definitely. It doesn't feel yet, um, so I haven't seen the tool myself, but my um, behaviour support lead and assistant head pastoral, they went along to one of the primary schools to have a look at it. Now they came back reporting that it wasn't going to do this sort of stuff and we are really throwing a lot of time and effort at this to make sure that we can tell the story of the year. They didn't feel that CPOMs could. For example, can you put, can you just define your initiatives? Can you say what the initiatives are and does it then produce something that's a, you know, a one page? I don't think you would get 
Yeah, that's they what they came back with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it doesn't do. What it really clear chronology. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't get that kind of visual. Ah, so I saw the attendance figure went up after you did whatever you did there. And the other thing, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think we've got a lot of power out but we have lost some because we use yeah. this exact same screen. Yeah. Um, and we've kind of lost it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And being able to define those. So it might be as simple as a phone call home or something, or I met with the tutor or whatever. I mean, one of the issues that we're going to try and battle against is just having a load of those blue lines across the thing. I don't know you're going to hear much about that. But, um, like I say, at readmission meetings and things, being able to compare performance year on year has been really useful. And when I'm sat across the table from HMI and they're asking me about the outcomes, and I'll be able to say, well, here you go, those are the five individuals. That's the story of their year. And that's the position I want to be in, really. That's what I want to be able to do. Thank you so much. I say stretch legs.